we're going to look at a set of vectors and determine if they are linearly independent or not. So we'll do this two different times. In this first part, we're going to look at the vectors 2, 2, 1, and negative 4, 6, 5, and 1, 0, 0. And we're asking the question, are these vectors, this set of three vectors, linearly independent? So recall what it means for vectors to be linearly independent. If this linear combination of them, so if I take a number alpha 1 times the first vector, a number alpha 2 times the second one, and a number alpha 3 times the third one, if this linear combination is equal to the all zero vector, if this has a solution that is only the trivial solution, meaning if the only way that I can find alpha 1, alpha 2, and alpha 3 to force this linear combination to be all zeros, if the only solution to that is the trivial solution when alpha 1, alpha 2, and alpha 3 are equal to zero, then we say that the vectors are linearly independent. If there's another solution, if I can find alpha 1, alpha 2, and alpha 3 that yield the all zero vector such that alpha 1, alpha 2, and alpha 3 aren't all zero, then we have a non-trivial solution and we say that the vectors are dependent. So how can we figure this out? Well, we can do this by constructing an augmented matrix and figuring out if we can solve for the coefficients, alpha 1, alpha 2, and alpha 3. If it turns out there's only the trivial solution, then we say they're independent. If there's more than the trivial solution, then we say they're dependent. So let's go ahead and form the augmented matrix. The first column is the first vector. The second column is the second vector. The third column is the third vector. And then the fourth column is the all zero vector, because that's what we're seeing if we can find a solution for. I call this the augmented matrix as usual. So that's our augmented matrix. And then if I perform row reduction, and we're not going to do all those steps here. I have lots of other videos where we go through those details of how you do that exactly. But if I perform row reduction steps, I'll end up with a row reduced matrix that looks like this. So when I look at this, we have a pivot in every single column. So there are no free variables, there are just three basic variables, alpha 1, alpha 2, and alpha 3. And when I look at this, if I look at the first row, this equation right here says that 1 times alpha 1 plus 0 times alpha 2 plus 0 times alpha 3 equals 0, which means that alpha 1 is 0. Similarly, when I look at the second row, this line here tells me that alpha 2 is equal to 0, and the third line tells me that alpha 3 is equal to 0. So the only solution to this system of equations that I've constructed is the trivial solution. So the only solution is the trivial solution, and that means that these vectors are indeed independent. So we have determined that these vectors are linearly independent vectors. Let's do another example. So same first two vectors, but the third vector I'm going to change to be negative 2, 8, and 6. Are these linearly independent? Again, we know how to check this. If the linear combination of these vectors equaling the zero vector has only a trivial solution, then they are linearly independent. If there's a non-trivial solution to this equation, then we know they are dependent. So that's our statement again. How am I going to figure this out? I'm going to form an augmented matrix. Column 1, column 2, column 3, and then the all zero vector. I need to solve this system of equations. If I perform row reduction, this turns into the matrix that looks like this. So this looks a little bit different than the first time because we've changed that third vector. It's going to have a different solution. I have a pivot in the first column. Here's a pivot. I have a pivot in the second column. So we know that x1 and x2 are basic variables. That leaves x3 as a free variable. So x1 and x2 are basic variables, and x3 is a free variable. So that means I can write x1 equals a negative x3. Up here, this line right here says that x1 is equal to a negative x3. And this line similarly says that x2 is equal to a negative x3. And x3 is free. So this is my solution to this system of equations. There's actually a whole family of answers, a whole infinite collection of solutions, not just the trivial solution. So since I have more than the trivial solution, these vectors are linearly dependent. So if we've used the definition and we've shown that these vectors are indeed linearly dependent.